We are continuing our 12 recipes of Christmas, hopefully all shot and shown to you within the next 12 days. The first recipe was a lumpia Shanghai. This time we're focusing again on a Filipino Noche Buena classic, the embutido. It is one of my favorite things to eat, especially before a meal. It's nice and sweet, has all those kind of notes and flavors that you expect from Filipino food, and it just feels so comforting and delicious. So let's go to the kitchen. This was... This is much better in my mind. It would, it was gonna work out better in my mind. Okay. These recipes are really quick. I'm not gonna talk through them too much just to get you guys cooking as quickly as possible. All we need, we're doing a pork embutido recipe. I got some ground pork over here. I'm gonna start off with some tomato paste, about two tablespoons. A lot of people actually use banana ketchup instead or tomato sauce or any type of ketchup. You just need some sweetness in there. I've also seen people use actual canned pineapple just because it has kind of like that really good sweet flavor that we need to get inside everything. Tomato paste is joined by some pickle relish. It seems like a very weird recipe, but it makes sense when you look at our culinary heritage. I think embutido kind of has that American meatloaf style. It's like a Filipino American meatloaf. If I'm wrong, please don't quote me, please don't hate me. Peace, love, happiness. It's Christmas, don't, don't hate guys. Please, don't hate me. I'm serious, leave me alone. Leave the internet. If you're angry, go see a doctor. Everything gets mixed up together. Help it out with two eggs. This will help bind everything. A Little bit of some onions, maybe just half a cup. Some chopped up minced carrots, about half a cup as well. Breadcrumbs component here, especially when you're making like a meatloaf style dish. A little bit of all-purpose flour. You really want to develop kind of like a gooey, sticky paste. I feel like this would have been smarter from the beginning. See, I disappoint myself too sometimes. Not just you, mom. Not just you. Salt and pepper. The lazy way. I feel like it's like guns. Some raisins, very key. The recipes for embutido will vary from time to time, but things that are key are like raisins, pork, obviously. That is all good, all mixed up together. Set that to the side. I'm gonna crack open two hard boiled eggs. I've got two Chorizos right here. Um, the chorizos are not necessarily a very traditional way of doing it. I've seen Vienna sausage, but honestly, I'm not a fan of Vienna sausage. I find it too processed-ish in flavor. The chorizo at least has a little spice kick, some acidity. Just brings overall more interesting things. Take our aluminum foil out, super easy. Place it here. Remember to kind of calculate. So this is our steaming vessel. So we don't want it bigger than that. Spread that out. We're trying to get kind of like a nice rectangular shape that's not too big. We want this to be at least kind of like one inch thick. Okay, that looks good. Uh, once you have a shape that you're more or less happy with, we're gonna go ahead and quarter the eggs. And then I think we only need one sausage. So we're gonna go ahead and just slice that in half. What I like to do is alternate them Make sure that they don't overlap. Eggs go in. All we gotta do now is roll it. You kinda wanna just keep it as compact as possible. And what's important is that you close that loop. So make sure you do it carefully at first. Then you can press it down like that. Shape it more or less the way you want it. I like kinda just making sure it's closed up making sure that's squared up. Get it back to exactly where it was and push it in a bit more because what's gonna happen when it cooks, that fat's gonna render out 
and then it's gonna get more or less loose. So you wanna keep it as tight as you can without kind of like creating this huge problem and gap. And then flip, keeping it tight, just like a sushi roll. Pull it a bit. And flip again. Close the sides, just like a big candy wrapper. It should feel, squeeze, push in. Get a nice cylinder, nice and tight. All right, so a lot of people, before you get pissed at me and get mad at me, and I don't want that to happen. People put it in the oven, usually, but a lot of people in the Philippines don't actually have ovens, so that's why it got really popular to do it in those shomai baskets or to do it in steamers. You can also do it on top of the stove if you have a steamer. I do not. Sponsors, steamer. And so what we need to do now is basically steam it, but I love the effect of the oven because it gives it that golden crust and pork when it, when it hits that heat versus the steamer, the heat, the sear, really just gives it a beautiful caramelization. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put those two things together, steam it, and then pan fry it in some butter. Should I do butter? Let's pan fry it in some butter. It's not Filipino at all. Don't kill me. Okay, this goes in for 30 minutes, and then, it fits, it fits. Steam for 30 minutes and then sear on all sides for about three minutes, and voila. It smells like embutido. Let's open this up. It's been about 35 minutes, it's been in there. You'll see that some of the oil starts dripping out. Oh my God, that's really hot. Let's open that up. Mmm, mama. All right, our roll is ready. All we're gonna do now is fry it. I was kidding about the butter, guys. I'm not gonna put it in the butter. I'm gonna use something relax. I was kidding about the butter. I'm gonna use some of my favorite anatta oil. It'll give us a nice color, a nice peppery flavor and taste. And then what we're gonna do is quickly just fry it, try not to break it. All we're looking to do now is just create color. <laughs> if I take it with a spoon, it's gonna break. If I take it with thongs, it's gonna break, so. Do it with what your mama gave you. Woo! See, it helps even blot out some oil. Perfect. Look at that, I mean, you've heard of Christmas logs before. This is a Filipino Christmas log. Oh, you also have Brasso de Mercedes. Slice it up, really sharp knife, very important, because you are going to hit a sausage. So the worst thing you want is to kind of go in and, and the sausage breaks, right? It is a chorizo, so it'll be slightly harder, so make sure your knife is nice and sharp. I'm saying all this because if it happens, at least the explanation's there. So far, so good. Nice and centered, nice and pretty. That didn't break, guys, I promise it didn't. There you have it, a fun little embutido roll. So this looks really delicious. You could serve it with sauce, or you could actually just eat it like that because the chorizo already has kind of that spiciness. But who am I kidding? It's banana ketchup time. I mean, if we gave a shout out to Mang Tomas, might as well give a shout out to UFC banana ketchup too. If only they made their packaging much easier to open. Woo! It's like child lock. Oh, I haven't had this in the longest time. It smells funky. This is the spicy one. It's a very natural red. Call it blood crimson. Dip. I actually love that I put the chorizo in there. The spiciness is so good. And the banana ketchup actually really does work. Delicious, man. This is 100% a winner and it should definitely be 
on your Christmas table for the holidays or any other day. Breakfast either. It's totally breakfast, sausages and eggs. Who would have thought? Please like the comment and please like the comment. <laughs> please like the video. See you guys soon. Please subscribe. More videos coming up and more videos that were posted previously. So there's lots of videos for you guys to watch. I know it's a lot, but deal with it.